allowed to move because we're trying to record so that we can share this with parents uh, who can't get here tonight because they're stuck over the border. Um, there is a lot of content here and I'm going to try and push through it as quick as I can, but I will hang around if you have questions. So we're going to cover external exams and we'll cover some basic information around QTAC applications as well. So what are the external exams and when do they happen? I'm mildly uncomfortable with this word. So external exams happen for all general subjects. Maths and science subjects have a two-part exam, so part A, part B, sometimes on the same day, sometimes not. Um, and they're worth 50% of the final results. So the kids have banked uh, marks out of 50, which you will get on their last report card from us, which will come in week one of next term, um, that says that they're sitting on 42 out of 50 for general maths, for example. Um, all other subjects apart from maths and science are worth 25% of a student's final result. Those numbers on paper can be pretty daunting for parents and kids. You need to remember, however, that um, the teacher waiting carries weight. Sounds weird to use weight in a sentence that many times, um, but they trust teacher judgment. So if a child goes into an exam with 50% or close to 50% and they're sitting on, so for 50% of their results, if they're sitting on an A or a B standard and their world falls apart and they bomb out in the exam, that will be considered atypical. And they have a system for addressing that. We don't know what it is because we don't mark their, well, we mark their external exams, but we don't scale their results. But they have a system to adjust results that are potentially atypical. They just don't advertise that very well. Don't tell the kids I told you that either. Um, the dates and the times for the exams are externally set by QCAA, so they're not flexible. So if, um, I always use the cat dying, if your cat dies or your car breaks down on your way to your exam that morning, you have to call me and get a backup. I can't say to you, oh, it's okay, you don't have to come in and do that exam today. So they're externally set by QCAA and if you don't turn up, you get a zero, which means that you get a not rated for that entire subject because you haven't done a piece of assessment. So it's really, really important um, that if your world falls apart that morning, you are touching base with me the minute that that happens. Uh, so we had kids last year stuck over the border going, Miss, I'm in the line. I don't know how long it's gonna take me, but I knew and I could make a plan by casually delaying the exam for five minutes, 10 minutes and making it look like that was just meant to happen. Uh, but I can only do so much there. So if they're sick, they have to have a medical certificate for missing that exam. And that medical certificate, was I meant to turn this on? Did you turn it on? Yeah, sorry. Uh, that medical certificate has to be on a proper QCAA template that the doctor has to actually fill out and it's submitted to QCAA and then they decide how they will calculate a student's results. Um, you will not be given an opportunity to sit the exam the following day uh, if you're sick and you miss it and you can't do it on the same day that everyone in Queensland is doing it, you don't do that exam. Uh, so it's really important that everyone understands that. So the timetable this year is released already. The kids have uh, been shown this in various classes. But so uh, for us, this is a show holiday, which is now the first week of exam block. So they've shifted some exams forward. Thankfully, that doesn't impact us this year, which I'm really thankful for. Uh, we start with English. English remains the biggest exam that's the most uh, marking for the state markers. So I think I marked the English papers last year. We marked on average eight or 900 each a person, but it took us nearly five weeks to do the marking just for English. So they start with English. Uh, if you do accounting, it's unlucky for you. You've got two of your subjects in one day. So closer to the exam block early next term, you will get a letter from me that has the exact exam start times. We have a morning and an afternoon session and the morning session usually starts around nine o'clock and then the afternoon session starts between 12.30 and one, depending on how long the afternoon exam is and how many kids we have doing back-to-back -back exams so I can make sure that they have a break. 
<clears throat> they must wear their school uniform during that time, but all of those logistic details will be in that letter. The exams are all at the cultural centre so that we're not running uh, interference with things like bells and stuff like that over here. So uh, you can see we've got English and accounting, both first day of exam block. In week one, we also have the exams that affect us. We've got PE on the Tuesday afternoon and we have drama on the Wednesday afternoon. And then we have math methods, paper one and paper two on the Thursday, nothing on the Friday. Um, week two, we don't have ancient history anymore. So we've got general maths and specialist maths, first paper in the afternoon. And then they back up to Tuesday morning. And then if you do visual arts, you've got an exam Tuesday afternoon as well. Uh, we have no exams on the Wednesday. And then Thursday, we've got part one and two of the biology papers and then legal and geography. Second last week, so we're getting towards the end. We've got chem on the Monday, uh, food and nutrition PM on the Tuesday afternoon, modern history and business on the Wednesday. No exams for us on the Thursday. And then we've got physics paper one and two on the Friday. This week, which was traditionally grad week. Two things to point out. We have ag science, it's the same as last year. We have exams in that last week. So if your children are partying and your children have an ag science exam, well, can I strongly suggest to all of you to support the, how many kids in the Ag Science class? Seven? Or was there only three of you this year? To support those three kids. <laughs> three? That's low. That's, it's a composite, I forget that. So to support those three students who have an exam at 12.30 on the Monday and the Tuesday, I say to the kids, please don't party Monday and Tuesday. Um, the rest of the week, pardon? They, what, oh, I thought you were talking to me. Um, the rest of the week, Wednesday, they will do uh, ripples in the morning and then they will have grad practice with me in the afternoon, grad parade practice and some swimming. Um, it's a, I was going to say motivational, but that's not the right word. It's a presentation that is delivered. I'm going to forget safety. her name. It's on road safety. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Thursday, they have their formal grad parade in the morning um, and then they set up for their grad and flex off and then Friday is a breakfast and then flex off in the afternoon. So grad week has traditionally now, has now become grad three days, um, which the kids don't love, uh, but it is what it is and we can't change that. They must come back for these three days. So even if they don't have any exams in the external exam block and they've flexed off for three and a half to four weeks, they still have to come back for these days. Um, that's a requirement so we can finalise anything we need to get done. Uh, so what's covered on the external exam? So for maths and science, they have those two part exams and they cover content from unit three and unit four. Uh, art also covers content from unit three and unit four and all other content is unit four. So if your students have been talking to you about what they do at school, unit three is started in term four of year 11. So when they say to you at the moment, oh, I don't need to go to school because we're just doing revision, that revision is super important because this content was covered in term four of year 11. So they absolutely need to go back and do that revision and that's what our teachers are doing with them at the moment. Um, there's a mix of questions. So in the maths exams, for example, some maths exams have a technology free paper and then a calculator paper. Um, there's a mix of multiple choice questions, short response questions, and then extended response. So in English, they have to write an extended response based on a question that's related to the text that they studied. Our kids do Macbeth. Um, some of them are response to stimulus exams. So they're given an unseen stimulus and they have to unpack that, analyze it, answer questions. Those question types will, be not, will not be new to your students. They are unpacking past exams, example exams, they're practicing and they do them again in mock block in the next week and a half. 
Uh, so the exam conditions are pretty rigid and these are externally set by QCAA. So QCAA will employ like they did in the old school uh, QCS exams an invigilator to come in and watch me and the staff delivering the exams to make sure that we're following the rules. Um, it can be a little bit confronting for the kids, uh, but I will spend some time with the year 12s in care, did we say week one next term, miss? Uh, where I'm going in to talk to them about the exam conditions and to let them know it's just me, it's just an exam, and they actually know the content for this exam. So unlike the QCS exams, you can study for this. You are not going in there blindly, you are going in there being asked to recall the content that you've studied in class. There's no surprises. If you've done the revision, you've done the prep work with your teachers, you are being tested on the knowledge and skills that you've covered in your final year of school. So that's a positive thing for our kids because you can prep for these exams unlike the QCS. So I guess the thing to be aware of, if they've got a, a phone or a smartwatch, they're not allowed in the exam room at all, unless it's for medical reasons, if it's connected to like a, um, like if you use it to monitor your blood sugar and things like that, but then it needs to be given to me um, and we keep that at the front of the room. Otherwise, they've got to be handed in into a little box over at the side. Um, you're not allowed to wear a watch either. If you wear a watch, you've got to take it off put it on the desk. So if it's not a smart watch, you can keep it on the desk, but if it's a, you know, it's gotta be on the desk in front of you. You can't leave it on your arm. Their rule, not mine. Um, things like they're not allowed to touch writing implements or their calculators during their perusal time, which we go over with students. Um, they're not permitted to um, write in the response book or to actually write anything during that time either. They're not allowed to leave the exam room within the first 40 minutes of the exam. That's so that other students are not disrupted, but it's also to make them have a go. There are absolutely some kids who get completely overwhelmed in the first five minutes and just need to take a breath, calm down, settle themselves down, and then they can have a good crack at it. Um, and they can't leave the exam in the last 10 minutes of an exam, and that's again just to stop the disruptive uh, moving in and out. They can leave early before that, um, but you know, the time is pretty... Last year, when we first did these exams, not many students were leaving more than about 15 to 20 minutes early anyway. So the working time is pretty set. It's something that they've actually gone through and put a lot of thought into so that kids need to use that time effectively. Um, they're not permitted to take any of the question books or scrap paper or anything like that out of the exam room like they could with the QCS now. Um, and if they arrive late to an exam, so there's rules around when I'm allowed to let them in. So if it's more than 20 to 30 minutes, you're not supposed to be admitted to the exam room. And if you are permitted to come into the exam room, you miss all of your perusal and planning time. So essentially that time is not made up for you. You finish at the same time as everyone else. So it's really important that they're on time. They're not allowed to have things like tissues or food or liquid paper and stuff like that in there. We have to provide all of that for them. They will get on the back of that letter that I send you a full list of the equipment requirements for their subjects and the teachers have started to go over that with them as well. So what are we doing to help your kids prepare for these exams? We're doing our mock exam block. Now there is chatter amongst some of the year 12s. It's just mock block, it doesn't even count. I don't need to go. Yes, you do. Um, it will be some of the most valuable feedback for them. Not only will the teachers mark it and they'll give you a result that goes on that report card that we send home in term uh, week one of next term, but it also allows you to know what it's like to sit through a two hour exam and to go through and work out your timing for those things, to know if you're going to be able to write your English piece in that amount of time or whether you need to distribute your time more evenly for that particular exam. Um, we are using public use papers and past papers in classes with students at the moment to unpack question types, to help them work out exactly what the question is actually asking them to do. Uh, so that there's no surprise there. 
We've done some study skills stuff during care and we'll continue to work with students on that. And we offer tutoring like tonight. We offer, um, so study nights are every Monday night, Miss McGreevy from 6.30. A range of teachers pop along and um, give up their time to support students. Um, and we get pretty good buy-in from those. Um, and we're breaking down content in the class into manageable chunks. So there is um, a real risk at the moment that your child will say, oh, it's so boring, I don't want to come, we're just doing revision. Yep, you might be just doing revision, but the reason you are just doing revision is because not everyone will do that at home and the teachers are helping you recall, process, analyse the information that you need to apply in your exams. Because keep in mind, all of this content is stuff that they have been taught. So they need to practise recalling that information from the depths of their brain because term four of year 11 was a really long time ago. And the more that they practise recalling that information, the quicker they will be able to do that on the day. Um, there is brain science behind that, which I'm not even gonna try and explain, but that recall of knowledge, the quicker that they can actually do that, the better they will do in their exams because they can focus then on either analysing that content or applying that content. Uh, how can you support your kid? Talk to them, ask them about what they're doing, ask them if they're studying. Um, ask them questions and practise that recall of knowledge with them. Make sure they get a really good night's sleep prior to their exams. Uh, I don't care what anyone says, if you do a two and a half hour exam where you are required to not speak to anyone, to sit there, it's exhausting and they're doing that for 15 days in a block. Some of them will have three days in a row where they've got exams. Um, that's exhausting. I get exhausted over there because that's exhausting for me and I'm not actually doing the exams. And it's also stressful for your kids. Um, I suggest to kids where they can let go of something that week. So if it's part-time work, if it's a job at home that they might be able to get out of, whatever it is that you can do to support them and to take the load off them a little bit, where you can, do that. Um, get them to school and their exams on time. So if a kid, I do a bit of a head count because I'm a control freak about 10 minutes before an exam and if someone is missing, I get every kid there who has a phone to start calling them until we get a hold of them and we find out where they are uh, because I don't want a kid to miss the start of their exam. So you can help me by making sure that they're out the door and on their way. And if they're not, ring. Uh, the school can put you straight through to my mobile and that way we know what's going on and we can make a plan with you on the phone. Keep an eye on their mental health and wellbeing. Um, you know your children better than us. You know whether they're going to be overwhelmed and stressed during exams and you know how to help them. Let us know if there's anything else that we can do to help them. I know that there are some kids who like to come out of the exam room and not talk to anyone about what was on the paper or what their answers were or anything like that, but they maybe don't have the confidence to not engage in that conversation so I just steer them quietly away and distract them that way and get them off into their car or back to school or wherever they need to go for a break. If there's something like that that we can help your child with let us know um, and make sure they come to school every day during the next four or five weeks uh, because this is where the rubber hits the road. So yep they've finished their formal assessment in class they're not lying to you about that Yes, they will feel like the work is going like this. They're not lying to you about that, but they absolutely have a lot of revision to do and it is very, very, very important. Rach, is there any new content still coming on board now? Uh, so some of the... It's a really good question. So in maths, and Miss McGreevy, you can correct me if I'm wrong because you're a maths teacher. So in maths and actually in English a little bit at the moment. So English, they're still unpacking Macbeth. Um, so in English, we're really lucky. We've got two staff, myself and Mrs. Smith, both marked the English exams last year. Um, same text, we both marked Miss Macbeth and we both did different criteria. So we have shuffled things around a little bit so that we are teaching them things that we learnt in our marking. So between the two of us, we marked, you know, just under 2,000 papers last year. Um, so we're teaching them some of those things, so not 
content as such, but definitely exam stuff. In maths, the way that it works sometimes in a topic within a unit is that they will cover, say, four topics in unit three, but there's a fifth one in there that could appear on the exam that we didn't need for one of our internal assessment tasks. So they might be going back and doing that content now. It's a small amount of content, um, but yes is the short, long answer to that. <laughs> so it's possible, um, but not in every subject. Maths I know is one where they do that, and English a little bit at the moment, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, any other questions on the external exams? I'm going really, really quickly. Yeah. Distance Yeah, so the distance ed exams run exactly the same. Uh, they run on the same day. So, um, yes, because they're externally set by QCAA. So if it's psychology, it's whatever day psychology is on the external exam timetable. And then I have to provide staffing and supervision for that 